Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi, coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. Today, our guest is John Burgos, activist, mystic, social entrepreneur, and host of Beyond the Ordinary Show. He has committed his life to improving and enriching the lives of others. Moved by the profound shamanic experiences that ignited his ability to pierce the veil to communicate with different realms and heighten his intuitive abilities, John has dedicated his passions to bringing this truth of inherent intuition to the masses. Mm. He's widely known as a leader in the human potential field and finds his true excellence in collaborating with esoteric and spiritual teachers. He believes that his work in conjunction with the luminous souls he works with intimately with and can be the catalyst for global change. So welcome. How yeah. are you today? It's wonderful to be here. I'm really excited about this conversation and this energy exchange that I feel is happening even as I was sitting in silence. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's very cool how it happens. People always ask me, cause like I do readings with people all over the globe and they're like, can you tap in? Like, do you need to see me? It's like, no, energy is energy and you can feel it across the miles. And when you get that, it's so exciting, isn't it? Oh, it seems like it's something that we live with every day. And so I've become very accustomed to it, but sometimes you're in the presence of someone else that carries a particular vibration that heightens it and makes it more visceral and, and yeah. reminds us what's available. So it's beautiful. I appreciate it. And I also think there's an understanding there. Like, you know, wow, like she call, she'll understand what I'm talking about or he'll understand what I'm talking about because we're on the same wavelength. For that sure. So, um, so you're an intuitive. Um, do you connect with, you know, angels or a certain spirit guide? You know, how do you work this? Oh my goodness, that is a great question. We're just diving right in. Um, I do connect with guides and angels, and for me, it's been. I haven't been one to really seek who was transmitting to me. What I really saw in in my body's response, in my awareness of it, is it benevolent? Is it really aligned? Does it come from, you know, that source of light? Is this in my highest good? And from that, I, I for the most part, would let go of identity and allow the identity to kind of reveal itself to me or energetically, I'd get an imprint of perhaps what was coming or who was coming through. So my grandmother, my mom's mother has been a big guy for me all my life and lots of different journeys and experiences that I've had. She's been there. I've connected to Jeshua, Jesus. Intimately, he's been, uh, I pushed him away when I first started waking up, if you will, um, because of my Catholic background. It's like, oh no, I'm not going that way. It's been, you know, they're teaching it the wrong way. It's not right. And it was funny, a few years later, this energy kept coming in and coming in and coming in. And it was so loud and unmistakably that energy. And from a very young age, when I was nine years old, I had a profound experience where um, an energy just swept me away. And I was crying, sobbing from so much love I was receiving. And it was unmistakably um, Mary, right? Connect to the galactics. I collect the angels. It's information comes from all over the place. But again, my my guideline is that it has to be benevolent. It has to be in my highest good and for the yeah. highest good of how I'm showing up for others. Yeah, and that's pretty much what I do. Like when people say to me, do you connect to anything bad? No, because I work with God and I work and I channel love. And it's so funny because I love when people connect to Mary because I too was raised Catholic um, and I began seeing Mary when I was five, you know, and I didn't tell anybody until, you know, Simon and Schuster said, hey, you want to write a book? And awesome. I wrote a book. So now it's public. But it was kind of weird coming out even saying that, you know, like, are people going to attack me? You know, like, is the church going to come after me? And you know what? Nobody attacks me. How can you attack something that's pure love and trying to help us, right? So it's, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. So when you receive, you know, your messages, um, do you feel it in your body? Do you feel like the like galactic energy is different than say, you know, the energy of Jesus or whoever you're feeling? Oh, one, 100%. And for me, it's, it's very sentient. My body knows it. I just have an awareness of it. 
and it translates into some type of telepathic communication. Sometimes I'll get the pictures, sometimes I'll hear it. Um, but for me, it's just this instantaneous knowing it's like, boom, 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 boom. And it's, it's, it's amazing how, how beautifully it's led me in my life and the choices that I've made and the calibration of how I've created the show, have showed up for clients in different ways. Um, but it's also beautiful just when I sit down and channel for someone or read for someone, um, which isn't my main thing that I do. And I read for people rarely. Um, I tend to ground it in in a different way through the show and through other offerings that we do. Um, but you can't make up some of the information mm -hmm. that you get because it, it's there's no way you could have known. Yeah. And so and that, you know, the intention of not knowing is really what hard. allows that to come through. Yeah. And I think it's good because when you're saying something that you couldn't know, it validates for the person who you're giving the message to, yeah. you know, and in my case, I just want them to really believe that there's something so much greater than us that is here to help us in this lifetime. Mm. You know, and, you know, from what I've seen and, you know, heard of what you do, I think you're pretty much um, doing the same thing. You yeah. Know? So how did you start out? Did you, were you, you weren't always doing this, were you? No, I worked corporate for a long time. Again, from a very young age, I was extremely sensitive and the household that I grew up in, um, we'll just say trained me to be extremely empathic, hypervigilance. And so of course that like, it helped to hone the abilities that I was already connected to. And I shut it down for a long time. I, I was born in New York, we moved to Texas and in that, it just wasn't something that I'd practice all the time. So I went into very linear mode and, and, and following the path of, of success. But I got to a certain point where it's like, okay, I've done everything that I'm supposed to do. And I'm always been a little bit on the fringe, but following this formula just isn't working for me. And it was this deep yearning in my heart. Mm -hmm. it's like, I know there's gotta be something else. And I dove in and I started, um, a beautiful intense process um and i didn't know it was going to lead i thought it was more for business development than personal development it quickly turned into spiritual development and within four weeks of going into one of the processes that i teach now and, and holding a space um of beautiful innocent intention uh, the floodgates broke open and it just i couldn't hold it back i had glimpses of it when i was young um, when I got married, I heard I was going to be married 18 years. And sure enough, we were separated on the path to being divorced. The marriage was absolutely over 17 years and 51 weeks into the marriage. Um, I was dating someone after the, matter, the marriage and after the divorce. And when I sat down, it's like, she has cancer. Are you sure you want to get into this relationship? If it's meant to be, absolutely. A year and a half into the relationship, diagnosed with cancer. And so we're going through that. So it's, I was always glimpsing that ability, but when that floodgate opened, it was just unmistakable. I was starting to see people's energy more profoundly. I was having prophetic dreams on a continuous basis. I had guides showing up during dream state, teaching me, showing the Akashic records, teaching me how to work with energy, like all these different things. It was amazing, amazing what happens. You know, I have a similar story because I was in business as well. Um, but it like was ripping me apart. I just, I'm picking up all the stuff on people. I was depressed. Some, you know, it was their depression that became my depression, you know? So I kind of went into this little bit of a dark night of the soul and then emerged, okay? But I do believe that people like us who go into the business world, we go in for a reason, like to feel that level of stress and anxiety and be in that material place where like people will step on each other's faces to just get the almighty dollar, you know, helps us help others, you know? So it's kind of, when you look back on it, it's kind of beautiful. So what do you love talking about on your show? I love talking about everything, anything. <laughs> It's, I'm all about love. I mean, truly it's, but for me, it's just like anywhere where someone is just off kilter where love is concerned, it's like, well, let me bring you back to it. And let's like, yeah. let me, whatever limiting belief is there, whatever seems to be holding you back to receiving and expressing that innate love that you are, let's talk about that. So 
I love all kinds of conversations, but on the show, you know, I interview some amazing psychic channels, um, mediums, and we talk about, and we get into the energies of the collectives that they're transmitting. Um, and that's wonderful. And I feel it's again, that energy that when you get put into that bubble, it's just the conversation yeah. just elevates, right? But you're in that bubble. And then my passion is to bring that bubble into our embodiment. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, that's there, but you have this also, you know, this yeah. stuff. And I just want to remind you. So we start playing those games, you know, we start having fun with it. Yeah. And it's great. And, yeah. And you it know, shifts, I, it shifts yeah. the energy. Yeah. When I teach like, um, I don't know, whatever I call them, psychic awareness classes. You know, the first thing I say is you're all, you all have this ability. You need to bring in the love and let go of the fear, mm -hmm. you know, and part of the fear is judgment. You yeah. know, so it all kind of goes hand in hand and it's just wonderful to watch people bloom or, you know, and on this show too, it's all about love. I can't tell you. I mean, it comes up in every conversation that I have on this show because I truly believe God is a vibration of love and the spark is within and in every one of us and let's connect and, you know, you know, love, peace and all of that, you know, in a good way. And it just, um, I think it's what people need to hear, you know, yeah. even through this mess of the pandemic you know, there's still um, a connection. Well, and not just what people need to hear, but all of us need to see the embodiment of that, the examples of those who, who were in confusion and got to clarity, mm -hmm. who were in suffering and got into liberation, who were in doubt and got to a place of self-actualization and who carry it consistently. And it's not to perfection because we all teeter back and forth in different yeah. ways but what happens when we become aware of the other side of it is that the, the the wobble in between becomes less becomes shorter we don't suffer in it as long we become more aware where my energy is over here let me bring myself back to center and the more and the more that we do that the more that our body gets used to that the more the parasympathetic then the, excuse me the parasympathetic nervous system kicks over and the sympathetic system doesn't run the show like it used to with the flight or fight response. We become intelligent beings. And so now we're merging our heart with our mind, with the critical thinking, not with the chattered mind, but the critical thinking mind. And when we merge that and we bring that into the capacity of how we create in our daily lives, things shift dramatically. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that goes back to the mind, body, soul you know, um, and how they all kind of come together. It's just not, one doesn't stand without the other. You know, it's together, we, it's this is how we're built. This is how we were created. And the more we bring that together, the happier, healthier we'll be. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of important. So let me ask you, what are your guides sharing with you at this time? Oh, wow. Um, hmm. There's a lot of beautiful information that's coming through. The energy from Mary that I've been feeling a lot lately is really teaching me patience. I just keep, keep hearing, be patient, be patient. My grace is with you. Be patient. Things are unfolding and our bodies are trying to adjust of a new way of creating as we're letting go. If you will, have a lot of our karmic ties that we had to the past, I feel a lot of that falling away, the way that we've created before, had relationships um, related through our personality and ego persona has shifted dramatically. And so we have a new capacity in which to create where we're not building based on the old stories, repeating the patterns that we've been taught over and over again through the limitations. And as that has shifted, we're a little bit in this void state where it can be very confusing and maybe even anxious making because we don't know how to create from the past because that's not there anymore. And we're not quite sure where we're heading yet because we haven't created that before either. So the space in between, I just keep hearing things are unfolding. Be patient, be patient, be patient. The other message that I'm getting very clearly is a very, um, how would I call it? It's a Melchizedek type of energy. It's a very, um, it's a very Jeshua type of energy, really calling us into precision, like paying attention to the details, to slow down, be 
and practice of being detail oriented because we're calibrating also to our ability of creating in the moment. So we want to learn how to be specific in that and not all over the place so that what we receive is a vibrational match for the purity of the intention in which we're putting it out to the source. That's beautiful. And I think that we've been forced to focus on those things through COVID. Oh yeah. You know, um, because if, I mean, this, the big lesson is we gotta be patient because we're not in control of this at all. You know, unfortunately, well, and, unfortunately. And my strong belief, yeah, my knowing is that everything is happening for us. Yeah. Everything is happening for us. So this practice and even if you look at a lot of the souls that are transitioning, my mother's in the process of transitioning now also, and I'm celebrating her. And of course there's a mourning that's happening simultaneously, but the deepest sense of my being, I get the soul agreements that are in place and, mm -hmm. and how many, how so many people have agreed in a collective, if you will, in the small collectives to transition during this time as part of their service and letting us know um, what we're graduating into, what we still have to learn, compassion in a different way, mm -hmm. and also remembering that the soul is, brings that light that never distinguishes, and that that's something that we carry forever. So in this, remembering that, that we get to carry that embodiment through the light being that we are here in this form. So even if our mind doesn't think it's safe or it wants to run or it wants to hide or do these other things, to really tap into the soul's intelligence, which we, I believe we have much more access to collectively than we ever have before because of all of the events that are going on that are stimulating the maturity of that to occur. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think that through all that we're going on, people have the time to focus on that where, you know, in the world we used to live in, you know, we didn't have the time. Now we can have the time to look deeper within ourselves, which I'm so applauding. Like, you know, I mean, it's horrible that so many people have, have made their tra uh, transition through COVID, but I don't know, for many people, they've, they have saved their own lives by looking at who they really are, you yeah. know? And they're changing the trajectory of the planet. Yes, which is really, really, really exciting. Um, in your work, you speak of the empathetic masculine and the shift that is occurring with the ways that we perceive the masculine role. You know, it's interesting because we all hear about the divine feminine. Nobody ever hears about the masculine. It's like, you know, I, I don't know why, but we don't. It's everything is always the divine feminine and, and you speak about the masculine. So I'd love to hear what you have to say. Well, the divine feminine is a lot sexier. So let's just be honest. <laughs> A lot more fun to play with the divine feminine, at least from my perspective. <laughs> um, but what's happening with the empathic masculine is there's there's a shift in consciousness also happening within the masculine, where there's a celebration of the intuitive aspect and the sensitivity that the masculine can hold, but has been repressed for lots of different reasons as we've gone through the patriarchy, but as the rise of the feminine has occurred and that heart expansion has come in as that mother Mary energy has really come in to support the rise of the feminine in its divine power, it's also unlocking the rise of the divine masculine and his sensitive empathic nature to be in tune with the world around him, to be empathic enough to feel the sensitivity when the female energy is ready to receive or when it's time to pull back and to create from within. And so growing up very sensitive and very empathic, I was, it was often used against me. Growing, you're too sensitive, you feel too much, you know, it's, you're making things up. Oh, I wasn't making things up. As I look back in the history of all, it's like, oh, I was so spot on. It wasn't even funny. But again, a man's not supposed to feel that way. You're not supposed to know that way. So it was confusing to me. And as men, we're taught to shut down our emotions, 
go in a certain direction, create this way, brute your way through everything. And the woman's supposed to take care of you on those other aspects of nurturing, of love. And that's shifting as men, we can no longer do that. First of all, to ourselves, men are waking up and they're like, this isn't right either. And again, to be a very sensitive, empathic and psychic straight man in the spiritual community um, seems to be a rare thing, but I would tell you it's probably more prevalent than what we give it credit to. It's just not spoken about enough because it's either made to be so big and so special. Oh my God, a man who's sensitive, there's so, there's so few like you. Or it's like, who do you think you are? You're a little, you carry a little too much feminine energy or you're a little too sensitive or whatever it happens to be. So the judgments of it get in the way of this wave of very powerful, creative energy that wants to dance with the feminine in a very cohesive way and form the sacred third mm -hmm. through that integrity. It's on the rise. So for me, I went through periods where extremely masculine and other times I was extremely nurturing. And the nurturing part is like, oh, wow, you carry a lot of feminine energy. And I go, well, I have that capacity. And it was, it was this dance, but it was interpreted as one or the other. And what I've learned over the years, and it's come on very strongly, is, is to come into that balance. Yeah, and it's all about balance because we all carry the masculine and the feminine. Absolutely. You know? um, but I agree with you, and I have two sons, you know, and it's, you know, the don't cry and the don't be sensitive or yeah. don't show your heart in that way because you're a man and you have to be strong. And I think that, you know, right now, you know, the this generation that's, you know, after us, the the women want the man who's in touch with his feminine side and bringing out the masculine in that as well. But the same thing with women, you know, we have to bring this all into balance, you know, the masculine and the feminine to bring it together. And the masculine is, is good. It's not a bad thing, you know, to have some of those masculine traits, you know? It's an amazing freaking thing to have those <laughs> traits. It's not, it's not that it's not a bad thing. It's a gift. It is a gift. And it's a gift to recognize it, whether you're male or female. Absolutely. Oh, I'm very attracted to women who can really carry that mm -hmm. forward. Again, that balance as an empathic masculine tells me that something is right. When something leans too much in one direction, again, being an empath, it's like, what are we compensating for? Right. What's up? And so the, the guards, the radar goes up and we can tell when something's off. So if you're extremely sensitive, extremely empathic, when someone is in an in equilibrium, we're going to feel it. We're going to be in reaction to it at first, and then we're going to decide how we have relationship with it. Mm -hmm. And there's stages of empathy that we go through the, you know, there's a stage of feeling everything and wanting to push it away because it's too much. There's the stage of feeling it, being aware of it, and then, okay, what do I do with this and how do I have a relationship with it? And then there's a stage of the mastery of the empathy where you get to a point where you know that there's so much swirling around you, but you choose not to let it take you off your center. Yeah. It's also it's channeling tough. of the energy. You know, like you were talking about judgment before, like, you know, people in business will look at a woman and say, oh, she's so aggressive, you know, yet if it's a man, it's like, that's okay. But I think that if you, like, I just know from me, I can channel my sensitivity, you know, and all of that into the male where I feel fe the phoenix is rising you know, and the confidence is going up, you know, and I can speak whatever truth I want to speak. And that's, that's a wonderful, you talk about freedom, that's a wonderful freedom, you know, just to be able to say that, but you have to have the male and the female together to be able to do that. And it's a practice. It's a being willing to speak your integrity out loud. Which can and be scary for some people. It can be scary, but really, what are the what are the repercussions? What are if yes. you're not in a household where you're in an abusive relationship and you say something, you're, you're going to get mm -hmm. beaten. And I grew up around that, growing up in New York City and witnessing a lot when I was very young, and that was in the early '70s. There was so much poverty and so much poverty consciousness, and so much so much anger and confusion. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're not in those type of situations, 
if you're not in a situation where you can be physically harmed for speaking your truth or repressed, then we have to practice it. It's, it's the way back to compassion. Because if we don't do that, we want to be compassionate towards others, but we're not being compassionate of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when we can start practice that integrity, that the power of that, and yet the innocence of that at the same time, we start shifting not only how we be in the world, we start shifting the dynamics of those that we have relationship with. That bullying or judging energy, mm -hmm. it can't stand. It, it won't hang around, but it's a practice. And we have to be willing to, to weather the storm as we're in it sometimes, no matter how afraid we are to speak it up. Of course, if you've had trauma in your life and things like that get re-triggered, you're going to want to have assistance with it, a good counselor, um, a good mentor to work with if, if that's going to support you. And if you can, but speak your truth, speak your heart, get out of the mind, the mind chatter, bring that beautiful critical mind into the heart and let the heart lead. You can't go wrong when you let the heart lead, speak your truth from there and everything will start aligning in the way that's possible to invoke that peace that you talked about earlier. Yeah, thank you for, you know, passing on that advice, because it's really important, really important. So people ask me all the time, like, like, what's a normal conversation? So yeah, to me, a normal conversation can be, you know, talk complaining about my computer, how it never works for me. Um, and but, you know, and chatting with my friends about, you know, ridiculous thing. And this, to mm -hmm. me, this is normal, you know, um, but you can still be a human being and talk about other things and not be always talking about this. So what do you think? Is this a normal conversation for you? Oh, 100%. It's, I don't, I don't turn it on when I come in an interview or when I give an interview or when I'm on a news broadcast sharing. It's just, it just becomes an expression, an outward expression of who I be. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not that I have to choose who I have a specific conversation with or not, but automatically we adjust to a person's, a person's vernacular because we want to relate. And yeah. so we may bring things up or share things, but I don't repress my excitement because for the sake of someone judging me, mm -hmm. I share it in a way that I'm hoping that it'll translate uh, um, because I want to have relationship. I want to build something. I want to have, be in that enthusiasm and the awe and the wonder of what gets invoked. We're in, we're in that state of creation with one another. So long answers, like this is the normal conversation. Mm -hmm. Do you have children? I do. I have two daughters. And, you know, people always ask me, you know, what are your, what do your kids think about this? What do you <laughs> think about this? Oh my God. It's amazing. Um, my daughters are 24 and 26 now. And again, the, the dam cracked open, if you will, probably about 12 years ago. And I started meditating. I started seeing energy and I started sharing my dreams with them. And they just started laughing at me. It's like, who do you think you are? It's like, Wait, <laughs> it or something. And I just start laughing. I didn't take it personally because I get it. I get it. So yeah. I start playing parking lot games with them and parking and, you know, I'd find the parking space. Oh God, I love doing that with my kids. Right. I love, and that's what gets the kids. It's like, she can get a parking space in the front of the store. All the time. They're like, okay, stop. <laughs> just stop. Just, okay, we get it. Um, yeah. And then... You know, they'd have their friends in the backseat of the car. And I look at their friends like, did you talk to your dad about that thing about school that you don't want to do? She kind of is like, did you talk to your, it's like, no, dad does this sometimes. <laughs> and so things like that would come up. And then again, I didn't stop being myself around them. And so in that flow, they learn to open up to whatever judgments they were taught through school, through religion, through other things, they relaxed into um, seeing how my life was flowing, like how things were opening up, how happy I was. And so they relaxed into that as well. And they kept witnessing me showing up during calls, during client sessions, having friends over and just information coming through. And they started giving themselves permission to be intuitive and to lean into it. And so it's like, and their friends going, God, your dad's cool. How's he do that? Or it's like, <laughs> I, I love your dad's energy. We want to hang out with him. We don't know what it is. And so even through the external validation that they would hear that would confirm what they were receiving, 
they relax into it and they they're open. It's funny. I have to share this quick story. 12 years ago, pulling out a tarot deck and, and, and like going into the energy of the cards would have been something that's like, what are you doing? You're weird. Um, I'm in Denver this week visiting my mom and my brother and my niece was here and my two daughters and they pull out the tarot deck and they're going through it and they're interpreting the cards. And they're just like, it's like, God, we've come a long way. We've come yeah. such a long way. Yeah. And the world is ready for it and they're ready for it, you know? So yeah, I love like the reactions from my kids' friends, but I have boys. So it's a little bit different. Yeah, it is. Yeah. They're like, your mother does what? You know? <laughs> but the good thing was, you know, when they were in high school, like I, I remember on two occasions, you know, a girl coming over to one of my sons and saying, wait a minute, is your mother Anna Raimondi? And my son said, do you want an appointment? I can get you an appointment. <laughs> and coming home saying, you got to get this girl's mother an appointment because I want to date her. You know, it's like, okay. <laughs> I'll take you whatever way you want to come into my world. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, I love that. Okay. I have to ask you, um, do you know someone named Dario? That's my dad. Oh my Is God. He passed? Yeah. He passed six he's years here. ago. He's here. Okay, he's come, he's been here from the beginning, and that's not a name I come up with. Okay, I don't even know anybody named Dar. I kept saying, "Is it Daria?" Um, Daria is a name I know. Like, and the, he's spelling it for me. Um, he is so proud of you. He wished he could have lived his life your way. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and when he passed, um, your parents were married. Yeah. Yeah, because he's waiting for her. I think your mother's been seeing him. Okay. A lot. Yeah. She's about the transition. Yeah, because I feel like he's holding out his hand to her and he's thanking you um, because um, you're bringing a lot of him to her in whatever way you are. And she's very peaceful. She's ready to grab that hand. Um, he is a beautiful energy, beautiful energy. And he's completely around you. Uh, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Oh my God. Is mom gonna transition soon? Yeah. Yeah. She's on, I mean, I, I have a hard time predicting death. Um, but she, her energy is like on the floor. Okay. And she's, she's not fighting. She's not yeah. fighting to stay alive. I feel like she's so ready to go not only to your father, but to her mother. Okay. There's My grandmother is coming in so strongly. Yeah. yeah. There's such a connection between her and her mother um, that she, but she doesn't want to upset anybody, you know, which is kind of interesting. Like, I don't want to upset you guys. Um, you know, I, I feel good about going, but I just want to make sure that you're okay. You know, mm. that's the kind of thing it is, but, um, yeah, I don't really feel she's fighting it. No, she's not. She's not. But I don't oh feel she's God. in pain. No, she's no. good. She's like, so it's, she's in and out. She's just, I don't know why she's hanging out to be honest with you. Yeah. Well, you know, we have all these human things that make us want to stay, but I don't feel any pain at all none i just feel like okay her dream you know like so many people is she just wants to go to sleep and not wake up she doesn't want to have to deal with it like for different reasons like some people want to die in their sleep they don't want the pain other people just want to do it easy and you know go softly into their good night in her case she just doesn't want to deal with it you know she doesn't want like the big commotion around her. Do you know what I mean? Like she wants to see you. She wants to feel you. She wants, you know, her grandchildren and all of that. But um, like, you don't have to throw a party while she's still living. You could throw the party afterwards because she does like a good party. She does, she does. <laughs> oh, Anna, what a gift. Thank you so much. Well, you've been such a delight to have on. I so enjoyed talking to you. Um, you know, it's been, it's been absolutely wonderful. And to all my listeners, if you enjoyed today's episode, please like, share, and comment, and subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. And from my heart, thank you so much, John. I appreciate it. Oh, it's such an honor to be here. Thank you. And thank everybody watching.